Hello, hello! Perfidious Bead here. Back to see if nothing compares to a quiet evening alone in XCOM War of the Chosen. I have to ask, Elders, is this just the one two that I've been counting on? Probably not, and since that never happens, I guess I'm dreaming again. But maybe, just maybe, this once we could be more, more than this. Do you think, Elders? Do you think? Probably not. I mean, we're going to walk into this room and lay waste to everything that we find inside it. It's it, the only crush, crush, crushing that's going to be happening in this episode is my XCOM team smashing at what's left of the Advent forces like Cousin Orson Lannister on a beetle. They're getting smashed. Smash! Smash the beetles! Yeah, that's what we're going to smash. Smash Advent. We're going to crush the shit out of them. Unless, of course, we get kicked in the chest by a mule. But I digress. So far, there's there's nothing that could stop us. Our team is unstoppable murder. We're, we're on a roll. We're on a landslide on our way down the mountain of victory. Do you want to go down the mountain of victory or up the mountain of victory? Either way, what, what's, what's, we've made every possible mistake against every pod we've encountered, and we've still sliced through this mission like a patented Ginsu brand knife through a tin can. And considering that we haven't had any trouble, I have to assume that at the end of this, when we come out on the other side, we're still going to be able to slice a tomato perfectly, just like a Ginsu brand knife. You know, I never actually, it's something I never understood about the Ginsu. The, they, they had the hard pitch thing going back, but I know the thing I never understood about the Ginsu brand knives. Why did they slice a tomato after they sliced through a tin can to show how well their product held an edge? Tomatoes are not difficult to slice. That's the thing. Cutting through a, you know, a tin can, okay, I mean, that shows some durability on your blade, admittedly. That's the thing. You'd be like, yeah, look, we can uh, we can cut through this and then a tin can. Most, uh, do you guys mind? I'm talking about Ginsu brand knives over here. Your persistence is admirable, but tired. It is time to accept the path laid out before you, Commander. Yeah, you know what it's time to do? It's time to destroy these avatars. I want to get back to my Ginsu knife thing. You guys, constant interruptions really are kind of making me salty. Hey, J.K. Rowling, you want to come run and gun and just butcher this man? Just fucking blow him in half? Because you could do that. Like, you may literally be able to kill him in a single shot. Yeah, let's do that. It, okay, we're going to put the... This is us right here, running and gunning. This is J.K. Rowling going through the tin can. But to get back to my tomato thing, what I never understood is they'll be like, it can slice through a tin can, then still slices a tomato perfectly. Tomatoes aren't hard to cut. That's not impressive. If you want to show me how well your blade holds an edge, first off... Cutting through the tin can, okay, that's a good start. But after you cut through that tin can or can of Campbell's soup or whatever the hell it was, cut through something hard. Don't be like, this can cut through the side of this can of delicious Campbell's brand tomato soup and then still cut butter with ease. Butter, I can slice with my finger. You want to impress me, after you go through that can of soup, go through something that's hard to cut. You want to cut an anvil in half. That'll impress me. Slice through that can of Campbell's soup and then slice through a friggin' anvil. That's a steak knife I'm going to buy. 16 damage. He dodged it, though. That's real unsatisfying. All right, he's going to teleport into what is, for him, arguably a vastly worse position. Okay, who's going to go murder that man? Uh, let's see. He's somebody who's capable of moving and doing damage, or alternatively, just Chuck Wendig can come over here and shoot him in the side of the head. Yeah, let's just do that, Chuck. How about a uh, little brain shot? Like right here on the old side. Got a 100% chance to hit. You know, we need... Okay. I'm going to rupture him because it's an auto-critical. There's no chance that this won't kill him. Now. Chuck Wendig shredded the shit out of him. So, one avatar down, two to go. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Chuck Wendig actually got a hair trigger free action off of that. I'm tempted to have old Chuckles Icar... Can you Icarus jump to here? Damn, it's just outside our range. I really wanted to be up here. Would have been really dramatic. Um, we got a hair trigger, so we've got a free action. What we could do is have Chuck Windig dive deep here. You know what? Let's do that. We're going to have Chuck Windig dive deep. Dive deep, Chuck. And then I think we're going to have him kill one of these avatars, too. Or at least mess it up real good. Oh, Icarus armor has... <laughs> Sucker. Shoot your friend, though. That's the only way to make it. All right. I mean, it could have been perfect if you had just also shot your friend. Then it would have been beyond hysteric. Did 
that man 11 damage. I wanted to go for the guaranteed hit, guaranteed critical with Chuck Windig there, because I didn't want there to be any opportunity that another one of our shots got dodged. That actually would have ticked me off. Seems doable. I still really don't like the dodge mechanic. Hey, Commander's Avatar. I know this dude over here is panicked. Can we still mind control him? You can't even see him. You can still, you know what? Just kill that guy. No Lance goes a really long way. This will kill this unit, and that leaves the only thing that's left. One panicked avatar. Oh, never mind, and we also almost killed him. He's battle frenzied. Well, make up your damn mind. Are you frenzied or are you panicked, sir? You can't be both. I that that defies all logic. You are either in a frenzy or you are in a panic. You're not in a panicked frenzy. That just seems absurd. You're also probably dead. Nope. Did you leave him with one health? One health. Well played. Okay, Joe Hill. Like, you're going to have to clean What's up the mess. A mess, Joe Hill. There's a mess over here, and you're going to have to clean it up. So come over here with this pistol of yours that you use every single day and use it again to make this avatar be dead. Your pistol actually did more damage on that critical than Lauren Bukes' shot. Pretty impressive. Uh, Tabitha King, I want you up here. It's not too far. Tab of the King answered, her, like, that motivational chat where she's moving there. That sounds like you just asked her how far it was left to before we got to Grandma's. Tab, Mom, how much further before we get to Grandma's? It's not too far now. Don't worry, little Jimmy. It's not too far. Three codexes, huh? It's the best you can do? You're going to have to do better than that. I have one person who can go kill all three of those codexes by themselves right now. Six codexes. That ain't much better. All right, well, Chuck Windig, you want to kill, like, three of those? I mean, you got a saturation fire here. You can hit all three, and it'll kill. Yeah, it's fine. These guys are all dead. One salvo of fire from Chuck Windig, and... He gets exactly one of you, because the other two shots missed. Well, all right. I mean, that's not what I was hoping for, admittedly, but it's also not the end of the world. Uh, Commander's Avatar... I'm thinking, where I don't know where those other three went. They're like over here somewhere. Hey, Tabitha King, how come you can't see those guys? Oh, you know what? We should just have Tabitha King go kill them. That's something we can definitely do. Let's do that. The target is marked. Yeah, don't worry about it, Tab. Are they close enough together? They are not close enough together. And in fact, you can only see two of them, even though there's very clearly another one right there. Where's my commander's avatar? Hey, commander's avatar, I'm gonna need you. I need your help for a minute here. Come over here and be in this terrible cover, because you're the one person on this mission we sort of don't care if you get shot, since you heal. Can you catch all of these guys in one of your little patented mega mega billions bombs? Little dimensional rift here. Pete, you're gonna clone those. I don't really care. I actually kind of hope they clone. My goal is to get. These guys are in a position where we can see a whole bunch of them and we can come in here and face off with Joe Hill and Joe Hill can just kill all of them. So far, so good. We may be able to grappling hook our way into a position where we, Joe Hill kills like six guys. Well, all right, not that guy. We're not going to get that one. Tap the King might be able to get that one. Joseph, I'm going to need you to grapple to... Well, let's say here then, I guess. That does not cost an action. Then we're going to Lightning Hands on this person, which also does not cost an action. Codex is dead. And then we're going to have Joe Hill, I think, come down here. And from here, he'll be able to see every single one of these Codexes. Can you see them all from here? Yeah, all right. We're going to move to here instead. Uh, I guess that'll be okay. We're going to have Joe finish him off. Hey, Joe, do it. I mean, I don't care what you start with, really. That's fine. One, two, oh, Joe, buddy, come on. Your mom is right there. Okay, that was still pretty fucking impressive, actually. You did just kill five of them. That's pretty good work. You know what? This, this, is a good, this is a good time for your mom to just step up to the plate and fill in for you. She'd be like, good good work, son. You got a good start. Let mom, let mom mop up the mess there. 
you came in, you tore it down. We can't be revealed because that was a kill shot. And me like, well, yeah, you came in, you wrecked him up real good, son. You wrecked him up real good. That's uh, that's excellent work. Mom's real proud of you. And he's like, thanks, mom. So, Neil Gaiman, you're gonna run and gun. Moving to fire position. You're gonna run over here. Getting it done. You're gonna shoot that codex and you're gonna kill it. Okay, that's what you're gonna do. Be like right here, not that one. Yep, that one. You're gonna kill her. Perfectly done. Not too shabby. What about this other one, Pete? Well, one thing we're gonna implacable you around behind it in case it moves. You can blade storm it. I don't really think that's gonna matter though, because the mother of Muggles is over here. Uh, no, I don't need aid protocol anybody. Like I was saying, the mother of Muggles is over here, and she's gonna come over here and be implacable, and she's gonna chop it in half. Done and done. She hit it so hard, that she chopped its leg off and sent it what flying. I honestly, I have to admit, I didn't expect you to hit it so hard that you chopped its leg off and sent its leg flying. That was pretty fucking remarkable, actually. You don't really need to move. Lauren Bukes? I mean, really what we want you in a position is where we think reinforcements are likely to show up so that you can shoot them. Probably in one of these locations, like probably back here. So let's put you up here. Already there. With a double move, you'll go into automatic guardian overwatch, and maybe you can pick off one or two of these guys as they come in, or maybe soften them up, something. Just really, we're trying to find a use for you. You don't, We don't need your extra move. Just end the turn. Bring me some more bad guys, please. Wanna, wanna get this show on the road, wanna wrap things up. There's an avatar. <sighs> That's a lot of shit that has dodge, though. Also, I can't help but notice that Lauren Bukes is not shooting at any of them. These specters are significantly problematic. This is a pretty tough pot. You will never hide from me. I was boasting earlier and being like, man, we're going to come in here and really do some ruinous shit. But now that I'm looking at it, those specters, that's... That's a really powerful pod right there. What the hell? Oh, that was the rest of our thing. The chrysalids are in, those, those are not a problem. We'll have no problem. Lauren Pukes, you didn't get a shot at anything. Nothing. You do have an 80% chance to hit that specter, which is respecterable. <laughs> I hate myself. Uh, we could have Joe Hill fanfire one of these guys, which would almost certainly generate a kill, but I think it's time for Tabitha King to come out of the shadows. Also, we should mind control something, not a chrysalid. Is that chrysalid literally the only thing you can see? Well, that's just ridiculous. What about here? Plenty of targets if you stand in this style. You know, now to think about it, mind control and a chrysalid isn't a bad idea. If we get kills with a chrysalid, we could make chrysalid pods. Nah, this mind control is not permanent. That's we can mind control the elite priest. Chrysalid, chrysalid, so elite priest is gonna be our best bet. And you're the furthest away, so you work for me now. Welcome to Team XCOM. Alright, Tab. We need to get you in a position where you're gonna have some quality shots, because we need these shots to hit. I really would like to get you up here. Is there any way you can do that? You cannot get up there without some kind of jumping or leaping ability. Well, you can see a lot of targets. How many targets? Can, you can see a lot of targets from where you're at, too. Though. Also, we could just put you up here. Let's put you up here and give you the elevation bonus. Pete, what are you going to do with Tabitha King here? I don't, I don't see what you're putting I'm going to uh, go into full Banish Annihilate mode. What do I want to start with is the question. Where do we want to start the Banish? I'm thinking maybe with the Avatar. What's our chance to hit him like? We can see him. 53% is not good. We do have Shredder. We're going to fire at him. We get six. You know what? No. We're not going to get that avatar with this. What we should do, let's start off with guaranteed hits. Let's see if we can get some executions, maybe. Oh, it's going to take. We're probably going to use all of our shots eliminating this pot of chrysalids. Which, if that's the case, you know what? It's not the worst thing of all time. Killing six. 
Never mind, I have no idea what you spent the rest of... She executed the Avatar? You know, Tabitha King, I was going to be pretty salty for a moment, but then you went and executed the Avatar, and I realized how much I loved you. That was sort of amazingly beautiful. Chuck Wendig has no bullets in his gun, so one of his actions is going to be spent reloading. Ready to engage. And I have a pretty strong feeling that the other one is going to be spent Icarus jumping over here and shooting a man in the spine. Like we Icarus jump to, say, here. That'll be full cover for us. Nice little flank shot on our Spectre friend here, who I believe is about to get chain shot. Yeah, double. You're you're so fucking dead, sir. Chuck Winnick is going to kill you twice over. Actually, we wasted the chain shot because we only needed one. Who's keeping score? You know, that's a good question, Chuck Winnick. You ask who's keeping score. Somebody back at the base, I'm assuming, is keeping score because there's like a total Somebody running got... total of all your kills. But who particularly it is, I'm not really I'm not really sure. We're gonna combat protocol that elite priest. What should we do before we combat protocol? Oh right, chrysalids are still over here. I'm sorry, chrysalid, I forgot you were there. You may go. Uh, Non-zero chance we get a kill with this pistol, so let's do that. Burning may finish him off. He has one health. Yep, the burning definitely finished him off then. Let's see if we can go here. Another shot, come on, Joe. Nicely done. It's dead. It has to be dead. Oh, it, you're right. It has to be dead. It's definitely, definitely dead. JK Rowling, we're going to bring you around here. Absolutely. The only thing that we've got left is one elite priest who is not mind controlled. And oh, no, you know what? There's a specter over there as well. Moving to Overwatch. Ah, what should we do about the specter back here? I mean, he may shoot at our friend because it's almost the only thing that's close. He also will probably actually, you know what he's going to try and do? He's going to go try and clone Chuck Windig. That's what he's gonna do. Let's get Lauren Bukes over here. Around. And I think we give Chuck Wendig like a threat assessment overwatch. We aid protocol him. Give him the threat assessment overwatch bit. Chrysalid dies, got some burning damage. Mind controlled man is still mind controlled. You're putting somebody in. St oh, couldn't that have been Chuck Wendig, though? All right. Well, Tab of the King did just straight up execute an avatar. So if I saw that remarkable firing display put on, I would probably also be like, you know, maybe we should do something about that guy. That, that dude seems real dangerous. Three faceless. Coupled with two faceless, rather. Nice shot, by the way, J.K. Rowling. That's how it's done. So two faceless. I mean, J.K. Rowling's got both of those wrangled by herself. She won't even need help. She got an Overwatch kill, so she has a bonus. She actually has her implacable move now. That's weird. Uh, what's this elite priest capable of? What can you do? You can go on Overwatch. You have Stasis. You have Mind Control. Holy Warrior. Priest performs a mind merge with another unit. That unit gains stat boost while the merge exists. If the priest is killed while mind's merge, that lo loses the stat bonus and is killed. So we definitely don't want to do that. What we do want to do is try and figure out what tile this man can't stand in so we can figure out where the hell that specter went. It's around. Alternatively... Pete, why you gotta do things? Why you always gotta do everything a stupid way? Well, I mean, there's two ways to do things. There's the right way, then there's the stupid way, and then there's the Pete way, which is just the stupid way, really. Let's scanning protocol. See if we can find our vanished Spectre friend and reveal him. He is... Right there. He is right there. Didn't go too far, old man! That's, uh, yep, not so good for you. No, I don't want to shoot at the faceless. Uh, shooting that elite priest. Or our friendly priest. Well, let's not shoot at the friendly priest. Pete, all priests are friendly. <laughs> yeah, some of them a little too friendly. Like, you know, I'd be like, hey, wanna, wanna see my penis? Be like, 
No, sir, I don't. Too bad, I'm gonna show it to you anyway. Great shot. It was uh, quality work. Joe Hill, if we put you right here, you should be fine. I'm just gonna probably so. fan fire this elite priest and kill him. Do I need to fan fire him though? I may not even need to. Chuck. 72% chance to hit that man. If we run up here, are we gonna be able to make that much better? I, actually, you're not even gonna be able to see him if we move. Never mind. Go ahead and shoot him for your at. I'll take a 72% chance for a kill here. Show that priest how it's done. Yep, see? <gasps> Chuck Windig with the straight up railing kill! That was it. Railing kill. You all saw it. Confirmed. Chuck Windig, master of the railing kill. Uh, we're gonna come over here and junk you. And then this man will just die to a blade storm when he tries to move. How amazing has J.K. Rowling been on this mission, though? Can can we overstate the amazingness of J.K. Rowling and the fact that? Also, can we understate the utility of Neil Gaiman on this mission? Because Neil has not done a damn thing. No problem, boss. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course it's no problem, Neil Gaiman. You haven't done a shitting thing the entire goddamn round. You've just been standing here like an asshole. It's no problem, boss. Yeah, we we know. No, you say that it's no problem, Neil, but actually what we mean is it's it's sort of a very significant problem. Commander's avatar got dodged. Not to worry, we've got plenty of backup plans. Joe Hill. You know, we could fan fire, which is three shots, or we could just take regular fire pistol, which uh, might be enough with a critical. Alternatively, we could miss. All right, don't care for that. Let's see here. We could give a bonus action to J.K. Rowling. That is not helpful. Tabitha King, what have you done this turn? Oh, Tabitha King is in stasis, right. So we can't aid protocol? Or can we? You know what? Here, just combat protocol this guy. That will take away all of his psychic abilities. He's going to be disoriented after this, I think. No, this doesn't disorient. Never mind. You're thinking a capacitor discharge, Pete. You're right. So either Joe Hill or the commander's avatar is taking a bullet to the brain here. Let's hope it's the commander's avatar because he's going to auto heal. Not that it actually matters. And then we'll just end our turn. That face is going to get chunked. Neil Gaiman may finally get to do something. That's a pod and a half, though. I don't know what that guy's doing, standing there slowly burning. Hello, final bad guy. Man, if Neil Gaiman's only action on the whole mission is to kill the last avatar, I may be furious. That is not good. Tried to steal the kill, but whiffed it, because of course he did. On the plus side, he is well positioned to help us deal with that avatar. He can walk over there, rapid fire, and make the avatar teleport, and we'll have somebody else that'll be able to wrap it up, and then this shit is over. Can mind control Neil Gaiman? Nope. That's going it. To... All right. <sighs> They're in Chuck's head. Dab the King gets angry? No. No, this can't be the end. I'm gonna assume that was the sound of a faceless getting chopped in half by the amazing JK Rowling. That's right. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks for the confirmation, JK. I appreciate it. She's like, yeah, that's right. That was exactly the sound of him getting chopped in half. Three codexes. Tabitha King is no longer shattered. I don't know why she was shattered or what shattered even does. Okay, Neil, we need you to move this avatar. So I would like for you to come over here. Whatever you say. And while you could rapid fire, what you could also do is rupture. It's an auto crit. Gives him bonus damage from every subsequent attack. Or we could hit him for 20. You know what? This shot is never going to kill him. I'd actually rather use Neil as a rupture here you to set him up. Auto crit. Ignores actually 19 damage is pretty good there. On the auto crit, he's ruptured. He's going to teleport away right into the hungry mouth of what I assume is a starving JK Rowling. Hey, elite priest, you want to you wanna kill here, buddy? 
I don't really care if you set yourself on fire, by the way. That's only beneficial for us. And then shoot this man in the spine. Nice work. I gave you two point blank shots, dude. I mean, I can't do much more than that. Two point blank shots and you mucked them both. I'm tempted to kill my own unit. Not gonna, but I'm tempted to. Good shot, Tabitha King. That shouldn't happen. Well, I applaud your skills of self-assessment. Uh, we could combat protocol, definitely kill that man. We get uh, honestly, I'm not you know what? Just sh shoot him in the face. He went into stasis, didn't he? Does that unmind control Chuck Windig? It does. Good. That's actually what I wanted. And now our little friend over here. Yeah, this I, I say friend, I use the term loosely. I'm just putting that guy out of his misery. How come he didn't go into stasis, though? Oh, we're out of Icarus jumps. I actually thought if we unmind controlled Chuck Windig, that was going to get us an opportunity to Icarus jump just so I could go kill more stuff. I mean, th this avatar is totally dead. It has no chance of survival. JK Rowling is going to come over here and annihilate him. Actually, he might not even have. We, can, we might be able to kill him with a melee swing. How much health have you got? One, two, three, four, five. No, he has a little too much for a melee swing. We're going to have to shoot him. But I mean, we got him on lock. Like, there's there's no there's no opportunity for failure there. I just wanted to try and kill some more stuff. I just wanted to pad my stats a little bit. I didn't want to just beat him. I wanted to Bill Belichick the aliens here. I wanted to run it up a little. I'm not gonna lie. Put you on Overwatch, Pete. You realize you're leaving yourself with no backup plan in the event. No, I'm, I've got a backup plan. That's what Lauren Bukes is for. Chuck, I'm just gonna put you into Overwatch because your actions at this point are largely irrelevant. J.K. I'm going to do the dirty. Stand right next to this man. And then what I would like for you to do is take that shotgun that you use every single day of your life and destroy it. There you go. If we were playing air hockey, I'd throw my paddle to one side and say, that's game, Hendrix. Without the elder stabilizing the psionic network, everything's going haywire. That gate's not going to hold much longer. Well, there's nothing I really want to do more than dive through a puckered purple bunghole. Puckled, puckered purple bunghole? That's actually really hard to say. Puckered purple bunghole. Pup, puckered purple. It's like a tongue twister. Puckered purple bunghole. Puckered purple bunghole. Puckered purple bunghole. This shouldn't even be possible. Unless. Unless the fabric of reality is tearing itself apart and the commander's doing what he does every single campaign, which is all the heavy lifting. Yeah, just make sure you save enough gin for the celebration afterwards, John. If you'll excuse me, I'm gonna be in a Dragon Ball Z style Kamehameha fight here with the elders. What the hell is happening here, Doctor? The same thing that happens every time Dr. Tigan and Lily do anything. Something goes horribly, horribly wrong. And the Avenger explodes or catches on fire. We do that, we risk a complete overload. We will hide what was given. We will be whole once more. We didn't give you anything, Avatar, Elder Guy. You stole it. I did not consent to this, sir. There was a power imbalance in our relationship, and you took advantage of me. You Louis CK'd all over me, Elder, and I'm not having it anymore. Stabilizing. Synaptic activity returning to acceptable levels. And one transdimensional psionic network down for the count. There's actually nothing more alarming than waking up out of a shining bright white light and finding yourself lying on Dr. Tigan's table. That's the way so many of my nightmares begin. Good. That was a good grenade launcher shot right there. We need to recruit that guy. Full curfew remains in effect as the administration deals with the ongoing crisis. You have remarkably good lipstick, lady. Who does your makeup? Not you, the previous lady. You actually look like you just crawled out of a dumpster. What 
the hell is that over there? You guys see this? Dude thinks he's Cracker Jack from Street Fighter. He's just walking up here with a baseball bat. We got guns and shit, dude. What the hell is wrong with you? He asked him for gin. More Balatin. He's like, hey, more Balatin? You want some gin? More Balatin. The, the guy was just trying to bond. He offered you a drink, dude, and this is what you did. Wow. See, this is what I was talking about last episode. Like, this, I am the evil guy now. I live long enough to see myself become the villain. Dude walks up to a command post, obviously in a threatening manner, carrying a baseball bat. And how does Advent respond? They come up and they're like, uh, hey, would you like a drink, sir? They just, he walks in all threatening and they offer him a drink. They've really got to decipher that uh, Advent language so that misunderstandings like that can just be avoided in the future. It just seems wholly unnecessary. Meanwhile, in terror from the deep town, purple tentacles rise from the ashes. Take two interactive, gonna put loot boxes in the next XCOM. Makes me salty. Makes me salty. Wonder if every tentacle will have a loot box in it. Or if you'll have to get you'll have to open loot boxes to get tentacles. It's probably how it'll work. Finally come in from the cold. You guys have been a vital part of the team forever there, Vulcan. You could have come in from the cold like hundreds of weeks ago. Literally at any time. In fact, for the whole damn campaign, I asked you to send me another Reaper and you waited until the last goddamn minute to send me Terry Brooks, you jerk. Brothers and sisters, welcome home. See, I'm telling you, these Advent cats... They're all right. They come out. Betos is like, hey, more Balotin. Welcome home. Here's a jug of gin that we stole from John Bradford's bathtub. More Balotin, son. Welcome to skirmisher service. What are you guys on about, though? With the psionic network down, the core is even stronger. Gather everyone. Our time is short. Sir, is that purple shit running up and down the veins in your arms normal? Aha, so a little extra footage. Interesting. So there you go. Commander, we started out on Commander. We finished it. How'd we do? We won 51 missions. On average, the world won 55. We lost one. On average, the world lost none. We had 21 flawlesses versus the world's 18. We killed fewer aliens, lost fewer soldiers. You know, two of those ones you're billing me for actually weren't my fault in the soldiers lost department there, champ, because those were the tutorial guys. 3% higher than average. Uh, we did our missions on average slightly slower than the world. Huh. Chosen killed. Everybody killed three. Days the first chosen kill. Took us a little bit longer. Kills by faction heroes. 153 versus the world's 193. Apparently the world was using the faction members more. A global ability points earned. Well, we crushed the world in that respect. Number of level three soldier bonds, we had four versus the world's average two. We had researched 11 breakthroughs versus the world's 13. Who saw action? We only had 30 troopers. World by and large saw 39. We got our first colonel faster than the world. We spent much less time than the world wounded. That actually, I'm quite pleased with that one. We got 101 promotions versus the world's 94. We had 18 colonels versus the world's 12. Wow, we had like 33% increase. Signing soldiers trained, zero, because they suck. Number of Magi, also zero, because they suck. We got 29 hack rewards. Only hacked 10 robots versus the world's eight. We had eight scientists. By and large, the world had 10. We had 10 engineers. By and large, the world had 11. No significant difference there. Took us three days longer than average to get mag weapons. We got beam weapons three days faster than average. Three days longer than average for plated armor. Powered armor, we dawdled on that one, admittedly. Took us a long damn time to get to alien encryption because we weren't in any rush. We built four radio relays versus the world's seven. Sabotage two facilities versus the world's four. 4,000, we, I mean, we did this really efficiently. We had, what, like 2,000 supplies left at the end of the campaign? We actually dead tied on the black market stuff. Huh. Intel collected 1,415 versus the world's 10,000. How much did we play to the black market? Almost none compared to the world. Interesting statistics, but there you go. XCOM 2, War of the Chosen, another campaign in the books. We'll be back tomorrow 
with an all new campaign featuring an all new cavalcade of ca okay that's actually a lie it's not going to be that new but it will be on legend difficulty gonna throw in some cosmetic effects as well we'll be putting in a little bit more mods for a legendary run nothing that really changes the gameplay too terribly much but we are going to add in some cosmetic effects so we can make our troopers maybe a little more dynamic. Some quality of life things, some cosmetic things. We'll do a legendary run. It'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you're looking forward to it as well. Thanks very much for watching right now. Drop a like if you enjoyed this one. If you want to see the next one, you know what to do. I'll see you again soon.